questions. We're going to move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motions 13018 and 13017 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon on the appointment of Scottish ministers and junior Scottish ministers. Uh, members should note that the questions on the motions will be put immediately after the debate. I shall invite the First Minister to speak to and move the motions. I will then invite party representatives to make short contributions and then the First Minister to reply. And I call on Nicola Sturgeon to speak to and move the motions. Uh, Presiding officer, before I uh, turn to the nominations that I am seeking the approval of Parliament for today, can I uh, confirm to Parliament that it is with uh, regret that I will not be asking Parliament to approve the appointment of Gillian Martin as a minister. Uh, over the course of this morning, information about uh, content on a blog written by her more than 10 years ago uh, have been brought to my uh, attention. I was not previously aware uh, of all of the comments that I am now aware of. I have to say that this content, however uh, ill-advised it, it may be, uh, does not reflect uh, the views of the person that I know uh, in Gillian Martin. However, the content does merit uh, my further consideration and I will therefore not ask Parliament to approve this appointment until I've had the chance uh, to reflect further. However, Presiding Officer, I do rise uh, today to seek Parliament's agreement that Shirley Ann Somerville, Michael Russell, Jean Freeman, Hamza Youssef uh, and Aileen Campbell be appointed as Scottish Ministers and that Ash Denham, Ben McPherson, Christina McKelvey, Claire Hockey, Graham Day, Ivan McKee, Kate Forbes and Mary Goujon be appointed as Scottish Junior Ministers. Uh, before I do so, let me record my thanks to those uh, who are leaving government. Uh, firstly, Keith Brown is leaving to become the full-time deputy leader of the SNP. Uh, he has many achievements that he can be very proud of, including overseeing the construction of the magnificent new Queensbury Crossing mm -hmm. and securing Scotland's excellent record of attracting inward investment. Uh, Angela Constance also served with distinction, not only in laying the groundwork for the dramatic fall in youth unemployment we've seen in recent years, but also in being a strong voice at the Cabinet table for those who are not always heard in society. Uh, the fact that Scotland has received international recognition for the work we have done to support refugees on LGBTI plus rights, on women's issues and many other areas is in no small part down to Angela's leadership. Uh, and finally, uh, Shona Robison uh, has been a compassionate and effective health secretary. Uh, even with more patients being seen than ever before, uh, Shona leaves a legacy of high levels of patient satisfaction and the lowest A&E waiting times in the whole of the UK. Her final act as a minister was to offer a 9% pay rise over three years to our NHS staff, a fitting tribute to the way that Shona Robison has always championed their interests. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, I know, have been particularly challenging for Shona personally, and I have to say the dignified way in which she has remained dedicated to the NHS while under pressure is a lesson in how politicians should seek to conduct themselves. <laughs> Uh, very proud uh, to call her not just a colleague, uh, but a very valued friend. Uh, finally, Presiding Officer, I would also like to thank the departing Ministers Alistair Allen, Annabel Ewing and Maureen Watt, each of whom have left their own legacies in government. Uh, Presiding Officer, the outpouring of thanks for those leaving government over the last 48 hours from stakeholder organisations, some opposition MSPs, uh, members of the media uh, and the wider public, I think speaks for itself. And I know MSPs from across the chamber will wish all of them well in the future. Uh, let me turn now to the new appointments, uh, turning first to the new cabinet appointments. Uh, Hamza Yousaf has been an outstanding minister for transport in the islands. He has championed all forms uh, of transport in Scotland. At the weekend, I even saw that he'd started to take flying uh, lessons. Uh, and the islands bill he stewarded through Parliament is a major step forward for our islands communities. Uh, as the minister for uh, the beast from the east and many other unexpected events. Hamza has more than proven his ability to calmly manage complex situations and I know he will be an excellent Justice Secretary. Of course Hamza uh, will be Scotland's first cabinet member from an ethnic minority background. That is a significant personal achievement for him but I also think it is a significant milestone for this parliament. Uh, Hamza will also become the youngest ever cabinet secretary uh, the, the generational change in Scottish politics has certainly been brought home to me when I consider that in Humza I've just appointed someone to my cabinet who I first met when I spoke to his high school modern studies class <laughs> some years ago. 
Uh, I've asked Jean Freeman to become Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport. Uh, Jean has taken the enormous responsibility of overseeing the devolution of social security powers in her stride. Uh, her forensic grasp, grasp of her brief has ensured that this process remains well on track. But importantly, Jean has never treated this task simply as some government project to manage. At every step of the way, she has adopted a bottom-up approach, making sure our fellow citizens at the heart of the social security system are listened to and treated with dignity and respect. And for these and many other reasons, Jean is an ideal choice for her new role. With the groundwork now laid for Scotland's new social security system, the focus now moves on to its operation, and such a vital part of government needs a permanent voice at the Cabinet table. I have therefore asked Shirley Ann Somerville to become Scotland's first dedicated Cabinet Secretary for Social Security and older people. Uh, since her appointment in 2016, Shirley Ann has delivered substantial progress on widening access to university, improving student support for further and higher education, and safeguarding Scotland's academic excellence and innovation. Aileen Campbell will take on the new role of Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government. Aileen has shown strong leadership in a number of areas, not least in championing a public health approach to problem drug use and tackling overweight and obesity. And finally, over the past two years, Michael Russell has been uh, relentless in standing up for Scotland's interests in the Brexit process, not least uh, his work in exposing the power grab that lies at the heart of the EU withdrawal bill. Uh, Mike has, uh, to the irritation, no doubt, of some opposition MSPs, become omnipresent in Parliament, TV, and the numerous events that he's invited to, both in Scotland and further afield. Uh, but this is testament to the way in which he has so effectively kept the minutiae and the chaos of the Brexit process under real, effective public scrutiny. Uh, his return to Cabinet is as necessary as it is deserved. With a new chapter opening up in the Brexit process, it's right that the enormous impact it will have on our economy and our society is fully reflected at Cabinet level. A number of other individuals remain in Cabinet. Derek Mackay will assume responsibility for the economy and fair work in addition to finance. Michael Matheson will take on the new brief of transport and infrastructure. And I've asked Rosanna Cunningham, Fergus Ewing, Fiona Hislop and John Swinney to continue in their respective roles. Uh, John will also continue to serve as Deputy First Minister. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for the personal support and advice he continues to offer to me and to other ministers. Uh, with that, uh, I now turn to the junior ministerial appointments. After 11 years in office, it is encouraging that this government is still able to draw on a wealth of new talent from our backbenches. Today's nominees represent constituencies the length and breadth of our country, and they bring an enormous amount of political, personal and professional experience into government. Claire Hockey is a former mental health nurse who continues to hold an honorary nursing position, and she will take on the role of Minister for Mental Health. Kate Forbes has been an excellent MSP and I think will make an excellent Minister for Public Finances and Digital Economy, working with the Finance Secretary on managing the Scottish budget and on tax policy. Uh, and as if promoting Humza it hadn't made me feel old enough, Kate's appointment also represents a first. She's the first Scottish Minister to be born in the same decade as the Scottish Parliament itself. <laughs> Uh, Ivan McKee, who has extensive business experience, will take on the role of Minister for Trade, Investment and Innovation, building on Scotland's strong track record of attracting inward investment in recent years and working to boost exports. Christina McKelvey becomes Minister for Older People and Equalities, building on her experience as convener of the Scottish Parliament's Human Rights and Equalities Committee. Marie Goujon, who has represented Scotland uh, on the Committee of the Regions and has recently held the UK Government to account on the rights of EU migrants, including her own husband, uh, will be Minister for Rural Affairs and the Natural Environment. Uh, Ash Denham, who has ably and effectively assisted in prosecuting the case against the EU withdrawal bill, is to be Minister for Community Safety. Uh, ben McPherson takes on the role of Minister for Europe, Migration and International Development. And I know that having literally walked 500 miles from Scotland to London in his younger days to promote international peace, he will bring a real personal commitment to Scotland's international development work. Uh, and Graham Day, who is a highly effective committee convener, uh, who in that role has put ministers under regular pressure, will now find out what it's like on the other side <laughs> as the new Minister for Parliamentary Business and Veterans. There is no revenge whatsoever uh, in that appointment. Uh, and finally, I'm pleased that Joe Fitzpatrick, Jamie Hepburn, Paul Wheelhouse, Marie Todd and Kevin Stewart have all agreed to remain uh, in uh, part of the ministerial team. 
Uh, presiding officer, as well as a gender balanced cabinet, I am pleased to say that the new junior uh, ministerial team uh, will be uh, gender balanced uh, for the first time. And of course, every one of today's nominees is there on merit. And I know there will be hugely effective members of the ministerial team. Uh, I also know that they're itching to get started and get on with the job. So I uh, move the motion uh, in my name today and it gives me great pleasure to do so. Thank you. I now call on Jackson Carlow. Uh, presiding officer, this isn't the speech I'd hoped to make at all. Uh, for seven years, I've scrupulously avoided on these occasions making remarks that are at all partisan in character. All of us are elected to this parliament uh, with the hope that one day we can serve in government. True, Scottish Conservatives have, have hoped certainly for longer than most. <laughs> so for those leaving the government or for those joining, this is a significant personal moment. Uh, and I'm genuinely sorry that all the material so many of their colleagues had volunteered to me uh, just doesn't seem appropriate now. I'd like to start by paying tribute to Shona Robeson. For as long as there has been uh, a Scottish SNP government, Shona Robeson has been a member of it. Uh, I have always found when working with her to be enormously committed to the National Health Service and to be tremendously well briefed in every aspect of it. She has, to her credit, the legacy of the 2014 Commonwealth Games, which she also was instrumental at a ministerial level in ensuring took effect uh, as successfully as they did. She was a very hardworking exponent of alcohol minimum unit pricing. She hasn't had our troubles to seek, uh, and I hope that all is well with her, and I certainly, on behalf of everyone in this party, even if we think fresh leadership and health might now be the right course going forward, with Shona Robeson, our thanks and our very best wishes for the future. I, I do also want to thank the other ministers leaving the government. In Keith Brown's case, I particularly want to thank him for all the work and focus he brought to veterans' issues. As a veteran himself, the fact that that was so was so hugely appreciated by all of the organisations who uh, participate in the cross-party group on veterans' affairs and by the wider veterans' community in particular. Uh, and his not being there, and I know his interest is not going to diminish in their uh, future at all. Uh, and for the work he did there, I thank him. And I do also thank Angela Constance, Alistair Allen, Maureen Watt, uh, and Annabelle Ewing too. Um, I, I welcome to the government uh, quite a number of the appointments. I, uh, I'm, I'm struggling not to sort of use some of the material that I had hoped to do, but it wouldn't work, I don't think, today. But I do welcome Kate Forbes, Ben McPherson. I think Claire Hockey is actually one of the most inspired of the appointments that's been made. Her understanding of mental health issues, I hope, will be of a direct assistance and give real focus and drive to that issue. To Graham Day and also to Mary Gujan, all of these appointments really, really stood out. I, I welcome Jean Freeman to the, the, to the Health Department. She's obviously done a tremendous job in bringing forward the Social Security Bill. And I say to her now, just as a, just as a, as a flag, that obviously with the concern I have on issues relating to MESH, the fact that the Public Petitions Committee are, are set to produce a further report on the issue, and that Professor Alison Britton is due to report probably at the beginning of the next session, that those are issues that I know and hope she will be very, very engaged with, uh, amongst all the other very considerable issues that are attached to health too. I, I do welcome Hamza Yusuf's. I'll maybe permit myself just the one line. The <laughs> press minister referred to his trying to be a pilot. Well, you always need a fallback in case you forget your motor insurance policy. <laughs> but, but, but I'll leave it there. Um, I, I, I do welcome uh, and congratulate. I, I, I had some lovely things to say about Aileen Campbell too, and I, I, just, I just can't. Um, because, <laughs> because I'll save them, hopefully, hopefully there'll be another point. Because sadly, unfortunately, a reshuffle that, you know, in some ways was intended to buy very bad news has become bad news. Uh, it was intended to take away from the U-turn in education. It was probably supposed to distract us from unfortunate events this, re this week in relation to Heathrow. You know, a year ago, after the election, the First Minister said this, any government after 10 years needs to take stock and refresh. I, I thought that meant we were getting a reshuffle a year ago. So this is a reshuffle that's been a year in the making, and it should surely have been underpinned by a vetting procedure which is fit for purpose. You know, Richard Leonard made reference to the remarks of Gillian Martin a moment ago, but, you know, I also came across the fact this morning that she said American Jews tip okay but only if you're absolutely busted your hump and everything was faultless in the extreme. 
often complain about the quality of the food, then the small portions. American blacks don't tip at all or tip next to nothing to be avoided. The waiters also black, remember, would do anything to avoid serving a table of blacks or be openly disappointed if allocated to one. I'm, I'm sorry, that is shocking. And I can't make light of that. Uh, and I really, you know, I've got to sort of say to the First Minister's opening remarks, and I understand the tradition on this occasion, but this is a judgment about the First Minister herself. She's done this job long enough. Thin excuses don't really cut it. You know, a reshuffle a year in the making ought not now to stand as the most notorious reshuffle in the history of this parliament. It's a real shame. There are ministers being elected this afternoon who deserve better. There are ex-ministers saying their farewells who deserve more thanks. Instead, frankly, thanks to the First Minister, all of that is now going to get drowned out. And while we obviously support the appointments this afternoon, this isn't how it should have happened, and it's deeply depressing for Parliament that that is how it is happening. I now call on Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is a long-awaited Cabinet reshuffle. It was clear to us many months ago that something had to change in the health portfolio. At First Minister's questions, Richard Leonard told the First Minister time and time again that the health service was being badly let down and that Shona Robeson needed to go. And it took her to the, until this week to listen to us. Now, in fairness to Shona Robeson, she inherited a health service that was failing. A health service where training places had been slashed by her predecessor, the First Minister. Shona Robeson was left presiding over a health service with chronic staff shortages, with no long-term planning, and where care of the elderly was failing. Presiding officer, this is the 70th birthday of the NHS, and never in its 70 years has it been in such peril. Staff are stressed, many of them believing that they are not able to provide the level of care they would wish. At the very least, the First Minister can, the very least the First Minister can do for them is to make sure that there are adequate resources for our NHS staff, both, both staff and finance, provided to them. Care of our elderly shames us all. A generation who, at the time of post-war austerity, funded a health service, free at the point of need, out of taxation, when they were already suffering personally. Therefore, we must ensure they receive the full benefits of the health service they created into their old age. And reshuffling the cabinet will not do this. What we need is investment in staff and services. The First Minister also changed the finance and economy brief. She obviously believes that the Scottish economy is doing so well that a job that previously required two cabinet secretaries is now in the hands of only one. Maybe on reading the Growth Commission report, she realised that in comparison to the economy of an independent Scotland, we're doing very well. Scotland trails the rest of the UK in reg with regard to the economy. At, at this time, she should be bolstering the brief rather than cutting it. Neither can we build a vibrant economy without high, a highly trained workforce. And this training starts in the early years, building confidence and thirst for learning. And obviously, the SNP backbenchers do not agree with this. Yet we see no change in this brief. John Swinney, cab the Cabinet Secretary, who this week shelved yet another groundbreaking bill has been kept in place. And he presided over an education system where attainment rates are falling and teacher dissatisfaction is growing. But to help him in this brief, he was given G Gillian Martin, whose words and blogs have offended every minority group and indeed all of us. Common sense has prevailed, and I welcome that the First Minister has had a change of heart with regard to this appointment. But as Richard Leonard pointed out, this appointment calls into question the very judgment of the First Minister. Did she know about these comments before this appointment? And if she believes that Gillian Martin is not fit to be a minister, is she really fit to be an MSP? Presiding officer, Presiding officer, reshuffling the cabinet gives the impression of action. 
However, the action we really need is investment in our services, our schools, our hospitals, and most of all, our older generations. This reshuffle does nothing to address these issues. We in the Labour Party put forward proposals to raise finance to invest in our country. The investment needed to make a real change to Scotland, and only a change of government will deliver that. Thank you, and I call on Andy Whiteman. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Greens welcome the opportunity to congratulate newly appointed ministers to their new roles. Uh, as a member of Generation 2016, I'm particularly pleased to see so many of my colleagues uh, then being given positions of responsibility. So congratulations to you all. And I think recent photographs on the stairs of Butte House portraying a fresh-faced, energetic group of still very young people rearing to go uh, is quite encouraging. And we look forward to seeing that same photograph uh, in three years' time, uh, before and after photo that reveals how they've coped with the very real demands uh, that come with ministerial uh, office. Because, presiding officer, they do face significant challenges and will no doubt be tested in their new roles. Greens will continue to stay true to our values of equality, peace, environmental sustainability and radical democracy. And we will continue to challenge all those in power in a constructive but determined manner. We all in this parliament have an obligation to scrutinize government rigorously and effectively because we owe it to the people we represent to make sure we have effective governance of this country. We're pleased to see ongoing commitment by the First Minister to gender balance in Scotland's government, a reminder that there remains much work to do by many groups across society in equalities. To those departing, we say thank you to Keith Brown, to Angela Constance and to Shona uh, Robison. Uh, to Shona Robison in particular, um, a very important portfolio, in many regards a thankless task, uh, but a particular thank you to her for her commitment and hard work and for the constructive way in which she has engaged with us, at least, over the past uh, two years. Government is not easy, uh, and we owe it to those who serve to acknowledge this, whilst at the same time holding power to account. We'd also like to pay particular welcome to Jean Freeman uh, at Health. I think Jean is an excellent example of a Cabinet Secretary who has um, engaged extremely effectively with Parliament, with other parties, and indeed with external interests over the Social Security Bill. Uh, with that all legislation was handled in that very effective uh, way, and we wish her all the best in a very testing portfolio. Uh, personally, I think it's also good to see Michael Russell back in Cabinet. He acts, uh, adds a bit of uh, panaz and a bit of show business uh, <laughs> now and again. Uh, it's, 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 um, it's, it's perhaps, presiding officer, perhaps no secret, Presiding officer, perhaps no secret the Greens would have hoped for at least one other change uh, in the membership uh, of Cabinet. Presiding officer, there are real ongoing challenges ahead. Austerity, demands on health and social care, revitalisation of local democracy, climate change, etc. All being taken forward under the long shadow of Brexit. Which means that the next three years are going to be amongst the most difficult for all of us engaged in politics, not just uh, in government. In closing, presiding officer, we welcome the First Minister's remarks in relation to the high standards expected of those who serve the people of Scotland. And I think it's a, a reminder that we should all reflect at all times on that what we say and how we carry ourselves very much matters. In conclusion, presiding officer, congratulations to the cabinet uh, secretaries and the junior ministers, best wishes, and we in the Greens look forward to working with you all in the remainder of this session. Thank you. Thank you, and I call Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. I will depart from my prepared remarks very briefly to address the events of this morning, uh, because governments must reflect the better natures of the society that they seek to represent. And that said, uh, the First Minister has the full support of these benches in the decision, the very painful decision that she took this morning. 
With that said, it is my great pleasure, pleasure to respond to the ministerial appointments on the part of my party and to hopefully inject some more levity uh, back into proceedings because I know that many dreams will have come true today and I congratulate everyone for that. It was a week of high drama. The uh, First Minister gave out no less than six cabinet level portfolios. It took me back to my first day on the job in this place, presiding officer, when I too was given six cabinet level <laughs> portfolios. <laughs> Um, I've been doing things that really should have seen me sacked by now, but uh, uh, my boss Willie, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my boss Willie uh, keeps insisting that I am the only person for the jobs. Um, I've, I've only got four minutes, so I can't read the whole list of names that featured in the reshuffle because I've only got four minutes. Um, and there are so many names. I think it's quite surprising, given that when the SNP came to power in 2007, it was on the promise of slimmed down government, focused government, streamlined government. Um, and now there's 25 of them. So the former first minister will be spinning in his Kremlin-backed studio. Um, I, I first of all want to say a, a big welcome to uh, Jean Freeman, who shares uh, my portfolio of uh, health. It's a, a great portfolio to represent. So, somewhat surprising, um, you know, the health that obviously picked me as the one to watch. I don't know quite how you beat me to cabinet, but there you go. Um, I, I want to welcome my uh, fellow fellow members of the 2016 <laughs> the 2016 intake, who are I, I think really great to see the talent that they will bring to the government benches. Aileen, Shirley Ann, and Humza, who are obviously being promoted. Um, I'm, I will miss the Queen's Ferry crossing exchanges that we had, but there is, uh, on a sombre note. <laughs> Um, obviously those leaving government as well. And I just want to recognise that ministerial service does come at a tremendous personal cost, not just to oneself, but to one's family as well. And to Alistair Allen, to Annabel Ewing, to Maureen Watt, to Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown, uh, you've done a service to your party, and indeed that's culminated in a ministerial service to this country. I want to thank you for that, and to thank your families for that uh, as well. Um, I want to focus particularly on two Cabinet Secretaries, Angela Constance, Acon, as she's affectionately known by the civil servants who will keenly feel her absence. You are going to be a very difficult and very flamboyant pair of shoes to fill. And Shona Robertson, my calls for Shona's resignation are a matter of public record, but I take no uh, joy in that departure. She has always treated me with kindness, great generosity of time, and uh, I think uh, has an obvious compassion about her, which is very uncommon in Scottish politics. Can I say I'm delighted to see Claire Hawhey in the mental health position. I think it's fair to say that mental health, progress on mental health has not travelled the distance that we all hoped it would in the two years since the uh, ministry was first created. But I know that her expertise uh, will bring so much value to that position. And I, 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 her task is going to be harder because she, there are more ministers around her. She's going to have to fight harder for that ministerial time and that recognition of that most important issue. And my, our appeal from these benches to all cabinet secretaries and ministers is that mental health should not be siloed. It should be taken through as a golden thread every department of government. And it is a bigger government today than it was yesterday. I said that at the top of my remarks. All told, the ministerial salary pot will cost the taxpayer an additional £275,000 a year than it did last week. And that's significant when I put it in context that pound for pound, that's exactly the amount of money that HIV Scotland stand to lose at the end of July. So I would uh, issue this appeal to the Cabinet Secretary for Health and her junior minister's team. Please reflect on that because HIV is still growing in Scotland. But I want to finish on a positive note. And that is that uh, you actually do have the best wishes of these benches. We wish you good fortune because the decisions that you make impact on the lives and the interests of all of our constituents. So make good choices. We will offer consensus where we can and resistance where we can't. But good luck and congratulations. Thank you. I now call on the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, to reply uh, to uh, the debate. Thank you, President Officer. And can I... Uh, Firstly, thank uh, members who have spoken in this short debate, uh, both for their uh, good wishes to departing ministers, in particular uh, the good wishes that have been expressed for uh, Shona Robison, and also uh, the congratulations uh, and good wishes for new ministers. Uh, those sentiments are, are very much appreciated. Um, on the issue of Gillian Martin, um, I, I take uh, the comments that have been made today absolutely on the chin. Uh, as First Minister, uh, that is part of my responsibility and I don't uh, hesitate to do so. Um, I'll uh, obviously reflect carefully, but let me make a number of 
points, three quick points in the time I've got available to me. Um, the comments that Jackson Carlo uh, read out in the chamber, I was genuinely not aware of. Uh, as uh, I understand it, they came from blog posts from more than 10 years ago. Uh, secondly, uh, Gilly Martin's been a member of this parliament for uh, two years now, and people across the chamber have got to know her well. And I would simply ask people uh, to ask themselves, in their heart of hearts, do they believe that the comments that have been read out there, however ill-advised they were, and I uh, do not uh, take issue with that, reflect the person or the views of the person they have come uh, to know. Uh, and the last point I would make is this, uh, presiding officer, when I was made aware this morning of these comments, I, I took action immediately, uh, the action to lodge a new motion without Gilly Martin's name on it. And I think all parties should resolve uh, to act quickly when issues like this arise. Uh, I don't want to get uh, party political, but there are uh, elected representatives of other parties up and down the country who have made vile, homophobic, racist comments without action being taken. So let this be a moment that all of us reflect that perhaps before we stand in glass houses throwing stones, uh, we should make sure uh, that our houses are all in order. Lastly, presiding officer, um, can I, uh, Alec Cole Hamilton talks about the size of the government, uh, a reasonable comment to make, but I'm sure he and members across the chamber will reflect on the fact that the increasing size of the government reflects the increasing responsibilities of this parliament, uh, something uh, that all of us uh, have welcomed, and, and also the, the challenges posed by Brexit, which are less welcome for most of us across this uh, chamber. Uh, Alec Cole Hamilton said he was confused as to how Jean Freeman had made it to the government before him. Uh, I, I would gently say maybe something to do with your choice of party, but if I'd known <laughs> he was in the transfer market, I may have considered uh, things uh, a, bit, a bit differently. <laughs> Presiding officer, the... The nominations I am making today are of capable, committed and passionate individuals uh, who I believe will do Scotland proud. I congratulate each and every one of them and I commend their nominations to Parliament. Thank you very much. That concludes our debate on the appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior Scottish Ministers. We'll move now to the questions on the motions. There are two questions, and the first is that motion 13018, in the name of the First Minister, on the appointment of Scottish Ministers, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the First Minister may now invite Her Majesty to approve the appointment of Shirley Ann Somerville, Michael Russell, Jean Freeman, Hamza Youssef and Eileen Campbell as Scottish Ministers. And may I offer my congratulations on their appointment. The second question is that motion 13017 in the name of the First Minister on the appointment of junior ministers, junior Scottish ministers, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the First Minister may now invite Her Majesty to approve the appointment of Ash Denham, Ben McPherson, Christina McKelvey, Claire Hockey, Graham Day, Ivan McKee, Kate Forbes and Mary Goujon as junior Scottish ministers. And I also offer my congratulations on their appointment. Thank you very much. That concludes business for today. Can I wish members well and look forward to seeing you all refreshed and reinvigorated after the summer recess. I close this meeting.